Welcome back to our lecture series, Math 1210, Calculus 1 for students at Southern Utah University. As usual, I'll be your professor today, Dr. Andrew Misseldine. In this lecture 15, I'm actually going to continue the topics of limits at infinity that we introduced in lecture 14, uh, previously in this lecture series. Um, in lecture 14, we introduced the idea of a vertical asymptote and a horizontal asymptote. And so what I want to do at the start of lecture 15 is to actually try to distinguish the differences between them. Because they both involve limits at infinity in a manner of speaking, but it's different types of limits at infinity. So when one is talking about a vertical asymptote, what they mean is something like the following. We take the limit as x approaches some finite number a. And so we're either approaching a from the right or approaching a from the left, or maybe we're approaching it from both sides, doesn't matter. We take the limit as x approaches a from some direction of f of x, and this limit turns out to be plus or minus infinity. So in other words, as x approaches a finite number, plus or minus, we get that y approaches plus or minus infinity. So if the y coordinate is going towards infinity, but the x coordinate is not, that is what describes a vertical asymptote using the language of limits. Now, on the other hand, a horizontal asymptote um, is going to coincide in the other direction. That is, if we have a limit as x is approaching plus or minus infinity of f of x, and we end up with some number a, right, just some number, uh, which we could be approaching it from the right or the left, I don't really care, it doesn't make much of a difference in this context, uh, but that's going to be a horizontal asymptote. So as x is approaching plus or minus infinity, y will be approaching a finite number, either from above or below. Again, the approach doesn't matter so much in that regard, but that's the difference between a horizontal asymptote and a vertical asymptote. The behavior uh, around a vertical asymptote is when you get close to x equals a, the y coordinate will explode, either positive or negative infinity. On the other hand, when it comes to a horizontal asymptote, as x goes to the extreme, as x explodes either to the far right or the far left, then the y coordinate will asymptotically approach some number here. Um, when it comes to vertical asymptotes, most likely the vertical asymptote came into existence because you had some type of division by zero. Uh, maybe you divided zero from the right or from the left or whatever. And so as such, you get this graph. You have this line that's outside the domain of the function for which the function is approaching positive or negative infinity, that situation. Because of that reason, it's very calm. Or it, it, because the, the vertical asymptotes typically come from division by zero, which will be outside the domain of the function, our function's not going to touch its vertical asymptote because it's typically outside the domain. That's not a hard rule, but it's a very common practice, uh, especially since most of the type of vertical asymptotes we occur, that, that, we, that we see, have occurred because of some type of rational expression, like one that we'll consider in just a moment. On the other hand, there is no stipulation that a that a uh, function cannot touch its asymptote. And in particular, that's very much the case for horizontal asymptotes. You could have a function which asymptotically approaches one side, the other side, and then the middle, it might actually cross its horizontal asymptote. That's a very common thing. So I don't want you to assume asymptotic means we can't touch it. It just, asymptotic just means that as we go to the extreme, as we go to the ends of the map, whether that's with respect to the domain or the range. As we go to the end, we're going to get closer and closer to this thing. So these things will be approximately the same thing when we take them to the extreme. So that's that's the difference between a vertical and horizontal asymptote. How do you actually compute that? So let's say we're given some rational function like y equals x plus one or 2x plus 1 over x minus 2. If we want to find the vertical asymptotes, I should color code this better. If we want to find the vertical asymptotes, this is going to come about when my denominator is equal to zero. So in this situation, we have to investigate what makes x minus 2 go to zero. Well, that's going to happen at x equals 2. And so we then look at the limits. Take the limit as x approaches 2 from the right of 2x plus 1 over x minus 2. And we're also going to consider the limit as x approaches 2 from the left of 2x plus 1 and x minus 2. So the thing is we have to consider the left approach and the right approach because these could very well be different. If we plug this into the expression, because after all, rational function is continuous on its domain, we're going to end up with 2 times 2 plus 1 over 2 plus minus 2. Uh, simplifying the numerator, we get 2 times 2, which is 4, plus 1 is 5. And then if we're a little bit bigger than 2 and we subtract 2, we're going to be a little bit bigger than 0. This ends up being positive infinity. Um, on the other hand, 
if we approach from the left, we're still going to get 2 times 2 plus 1 over 2 minus minus 2, which will give us a 5 over 0 minus, because we're a little bit less than 2 when we subtract 2, will be a little bit less than 0. This is going to turn out to be negative infinity. You'll notice that in my calculation, I did, I only put the 2 plus and the 2 minus in the denominator. I actually didn't care about it in the numerator. Because we're if we're a little bit bigger than 5 or a little bit less than 5, we're still positive. And when it comes to ratios that end up being infinite, we only care about the sign. Is it positive infinity or negative infinity? And so that's why I paid attention to the sign in the denominator. Because 0 itself is, is actually a signless number. It's neither positive nor negative. So I need to focus on the approach. Am I approaching 0 from the positive side or approaching 0 from the negative side? And so what this tells me about my function, if I could, I actually could have some a lot of information about its graph right now. Uh, it turns out if we were to graph the function at x equals 2, there's a vertical asymptote like we said. And so the function would be, uh, it would be approaching infinity from the right-hand side, and it would be approaching negative infinity from the left-hand side. We know that already. What about um, the horizontal asymptote? The horizontal asymptote will be computed by taking the limit as x approaches infinity of 2x plus 1 over x minus 2. And as we've seen previously, when it comes to finding limits as you're going towards infinity, only the dominant term is going to matter in that situation. So you get 2x minus 1, which is going to equal the limit as x approaches infinity, 2x over x. That simplifies just to be the limit as x approaches infinity of 2. So this is going to be a 2. And admittedly, there's no difference had we had done if we had been approaching negative infinity. So I mean, just like the vertical asymptote, we want to approach it from the right, we want to approach it from the left. But notice this calculation wouldn't change. The limit here would be two. And so this tells us that our function it had a vertical asymptote at x equals two, and it's going to have a horizontal asymptote likewise at y equals two. So the number two showed up again, but for a different reason. And so we see this time that as our function um, goes to the extreme, our function is going to approach y equals 2 on the right. It's going to do this also from above. Um, that We're going to see that it comes from above, and then the other one's going to come from below. We can add that extra bit of uh, specification on signs if, it, if we need to, if it matters, absolutely. Um, but... It, 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 so, we can, we can add that if we really need to. So the only thing I would say to finish up this graph is I might be interested in what's the x-intercept, what's the y-intercept of this function. Setting x equals to 0, you get the y-intercept is negative 1 half. When you solve for the numerator equal to 0, you'll see that the x-intercept is 1 half, negative 1 half, excuse me. So when you piece those things together, we can very well get the whole picture just by using the intercepts and asymptotes of this function. All right, let's look at one that's a little bit more complicated. We'll take y equals x squared minus 4 over 2x squared minus 3x minus 2. In this setting, it's going to be very important to try to factor things. Uh, we would like this function to be factored. The numerator gives you x minus 2 and x plus 2. It's just a difference of squares. The denominator takes a little bit more effort. Uh, you're going to have to basically do some type of reverse FOIL method. There's a little thousand different names for these things. The rainbow method, the AC method, the reverse FOIL method, what have you. Um, in the process of factoring, you're going to end up with an x minus 2 and a 2x plus 1, like so. For which you can notice that, hey, there is some type of there is some type of reduction at x minus 2. That actually does tell us something, that our graph of the function is going to have a removed point. It has a removed point at, at 2 comma, because 2 is what makes that thing go to 0. What? How do we figure out what the other coordinate is? Well, that comes from finding the limit as x approaches 2 of our function, y here, but you can use the simplified version when you cancel out the x minus 2 because the original function and this simplified version, they only differ by what happens at x equals 2. So we can use the simplified version to calculate the limit x plus 2, um, 2x plus 1, for which our limit there, we can just plug in 2 by continuity. So we get 2 plus 2 over 2 times 2 plus 1. We end up with 4 fifths. So we do have this remove point at 2 and 4 fifths. Okay, that, the question didn't ask for that, but that is interesting. If we want to figure out the vertical asymptotes, 
Well, those are going to be what makes the denominator go to zero. This is actually an important thing to mention. The vertical asymptotes will occur at those places that make the denominator go to zero, but don't make the numerator go to zero in reduced form. So notice x minus 2 did make the denominator go to zero, but when you plug in x equals, uh, x equals 2 in the original function, you end up with zero over zero. That does not necessarily mean a vertical asymptote. You need to reduce it. And so when you put this in smallest terms, um, no longer does x minus 2 make the denominator go to zero. And so in this case, if you set 2x plus 1 equal to zero, 2x plus 1 equal to zero, then you're going to see that negative 1 half is a vertical asymptote for this function. Investigating what happens. In terms of limits, we only have, we don't, we can use the simplified version of this function. It makes life a lot easier. x plus 2 over 2x plus 1. Why did I put 1 half there? That was where the remove point was. Sorry about that. We need to put in negative 1 half. That's what we care about. If we approach it from the right, then we're going to end up with the numerator. You're going to get, well, honestly, we don't really care about the numerator because it doesn't make the, the numerator doesn't go to zero in this situation, but it'll be what it is. In the denominator, we're going to get two times negative one half from above plus one. This becomes something in the numerator. Don't really care. The sign does matter, so we don't need to care about that. Two take away a half. That's going to be one and a half, 1.5. The denominator is going to be zero plus, so this does turn out to be infinity. And so by a similar calculation, if we plug in negative one half from the left of this, x plus two over two x plus one, you're going to end up with 1.5 over zero from the left, so you get negative infinity, like so. That's our vertical asymptotes. For the horizontal asymptotes, we then investigate, we take the limit, the horizontal asymptote at y equals, we'll see what it is in a moment, as x approaches infinity. Again, we can use the simplified version for all of our limit calculations. So you get x plus 2 over 2x plus 1. Again, this is a balanced rational function, so this is going to give us a limit of 1 half, and this will be the same whether we approach positive or negative infinity. The nice thing about rational functions is that if it has a horizontal asymptote, it will be the same as you go towards infinity and negative infinity. We will see in a future video that with other functions, like involving square roots or other, other functions, that the, the left uh, horizontal asymptote can be very different than the one on the right. Let us do consider a function which has a, that may have a horizontal asymptote that's not necessarily a rational function. Let's consider the function e to the 1 over x right here. Now, just for simplification, we're going to take the function e to the x and denote it as exp for the moment of x. So we can rewrite this whole thing as the limit as x approaches infinity of exp of 1 over x. The reason I want to do that is to make the composition of functions even more, more obvious here. We put the rational function 1 over x inside of the exponential function exp. And since exp, the, the natural exponential is a continuous function, we can actually bring it out of the limit process. And we're going to end up with exp of the limit as x approaches infinity of 1 over x. And notice that as x approaches infinity, 1 over x is going to approach, it's going to become 0. So we get exp of 0. 0 from the right, if we're going to be precise, but that level of specificity isn't actually required here. Because we need to compute e to the 0, and whether you're a little bit above 0 or a little bit below 0, the approach isn't going to change here. We're going to see this is going to equal 1. So our function, so if we take f of x to equal e to the 1 over x, uh, we see that it has a horizontal asymptote at y equals 1. If we take the limit as x approaches negative infinity in this situation, you get e to the 1 over x. The calculation is going to look very similar. We pull out the natural exponential. We take the limit as x approaches negative infinity right here. We're going to get 1 over x here. And so you end up with getting e to the 0 again. Now you're approaching it from below, but again, that distinction doesn't make a difference. And we end up with 1. So we see that even for this non-rational function, it has a horizontal asymptote of 1 on the left side and right side of its graph. Does this function have a vertical asymptote though? I mean, after all, when you look at it, you do see this one over x. And as we've seen, sending um, the denominator of a rational expression to zero typically causes infinity, right? So it seems like there could be some type of vertical asymptote going on here. So let's investigate what happens. If we take the limit as x approaches zero from the right of e to the one over x, pull out the exponential, we get exp of the limit as x approaches 0 from the right of 1 over x. This ends up being a positive infinity. Uh, so we're going to get e to the positive infinity, which 
really, if you take a positive number, that's a, a, a number greater than one and raise it to the infinite power, this is gonna be infinity. So that does tell us there's gonna be a vertical asymptote at x equals zero. But notice what happens here when we do the other direction. If we take x as it goes to zero from the left, e to the one over x here, same type of thing, we're gonna pull out the exponential function, we get the limit, as one over one over x as x approaches zero from the left here. This is gonna turn out to be negative infinity this time and therefore we end up with e to the negative infinity. Exponential functions on their left do something very different on the right. On the right hand side, assuming again the base like e is greater than one, on the right hand side, these growing exponentials will blow off towards infinity, but on the left hand side, they actually have a horizontal asymptote. So this turns out to be zero. And so we see that this function has a very, very curious thing happening on its graph. If we were to take just a stab at it, we're just going to draw the picture ourselves right here. If we look on the right-hand side, the right-hand side, it blows off towards infinity as we approach zero from the right. And as we go off to the, to the excuse me, if we go off towards in positive infinity, there is this horizontal asymptote at x equals one. So we might get something like this, excuse me, y equals one. But on the right-hand side, you also will approach one, you'll do it from below. And then as you get close to zero, uh, let me try that again. When you get close to zero, it actually wants to look like zero itself. It is undefined at zero, so it's gonna be an open point. Uh, but we're gonna get a picture of a graph that looks something like this. So this is an example of a function which is a, has a vertical asymptote on one side of the graph, but it doesn't have it on the other side.